try some of these these trilled R's. Yeah, it looks like gibberish, but these are the phonetics that it's kind of guided me through to get the pronunciation that a choir would sing to give you those vowel sounds. Hey everyone, Mark is here with Audio Plugin Deals. I'm here to walk you through East West Hollywood Platinum Choirs. They've got a great deal going on right now, April 3rd through 16th at 70% off. So if you like what you see here, go check it out. It's a great deal. And uh, let's let's dig in here and see what this is all about. So let's just take a quick little listen to something simple to start us with. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, software engine here. It's called Opus, and it's got the browser for everything here. And uh, this is just where you would navigate and find all of your sounds. So here, I just liked the attack on that to start with. I was just playing around with the different sounds here, but you can see, um, you know, they've got a lot of different vowel sounds, whether they're legato or staccato, and uh, you can you can go through and choose a bunch of different types of those. So. Um, let's just create a new little track here to to uh, play around with a couple of the sounds just to give you an idea of what's in there. Um, so this is the, what is this? The epic ah. And then uh, if we go to like something like uh, the women's O. Oh. And you can see across the bottom, I was actually clicking the wrong note here. It's got it zoned for each of those. So it's actually where it lives in the... Uh, frequency or the the pitch wise where, where they actually live there uh let's try some of these these trilled r's yeah okay so you, so you've got some uh some cool little consonants in there too not just the vowel sounds and uh oh unpitched i'm uh, i haven't tried this one yet either let's see what this one is where is that Okay, so just some, yeah, some kind of cool background sounds that they've got going in there. You know, a lot of these sounds I've, that I've clicked on, er, that I've played with so far, they sound great. Um, you know, you've got a lot of, con you got a lot of options for which vowel sounds you're working with or which consonants you're working with. Um, and then uh, I'll pull up some other controls here that you have over each of these sounds. So if we're starting here, so this is more the staccato one here. Uh, let's see. So here, if we go over to uh, the play tab, we can play around with a couple of these settings. Just changing the attack there, just like uh, basically that ADSR control that you would have on a synth to figure out how aggressively or how gradually you want those sounds to come in. Um, so you've got the control there. And if we look at some of the other controls here, I haven't played around as much with the other ones, but um, you know, you've got some of the, the main things that you would expect, like reverb. Um, you know, if we turn that reverb way up, turn it completely off. So a lot of times when I'm mixing, I'll prefer to do the reverb in Logic directly. So uh, or, you know, in your DAW directly. So if I'm throwing on reverb either as, as a plugin or um, as a uh, send, then, you know, I might do something like this. So nice that I can take that off here if I want to um, and just, just handle the reverb on my own um, since that's something that I do pretty commonly. Um, so... So this versus, you know, sending the reverb through logic. So that's something that you have nice control over. Um, if we're looking at some of the other areas, uh, some sort of mix here, what are we working with? Ah, uh, okay. So this is, yep, you can see it's highlighting here. I was clicking here and was uh, didn't realize I had to click over here instead. So this is the uh, mixer for kind of where it's miked uh, in, the, in the sound. So if you're sampling a choir, with the mic setup over here, uh, gives you kind of the mix control over here. So you'll see something similar in a lot of like drum kits, uh, like contacts, studio drummer, that kind of thing, where you can have the mixer view directly in the um, in the software engine here to let you 
show how much of each mic you're pulling in from from that VST. So, um, so those are the control. Oh, let's see. I haven't. I actually have not clicked on the stereo double one. Let's. Oh, that's nice. Subtle. Okay, so yeah, you can. There's a little bit of that stereo double effect that you can turn on there, uh, and control too. I, I hadn't played around with that a lot, but um, kind of nice for widening that out, getting a little bit of variance there. And then I'm gonna flip over to the perform and mix tabs here. I have not played around with these at all, but just to uh, give you a look at these, if you are interested in what controls you have over here. I'll just kind of click through these, but uh, I want to point out a couple of the other main points that I've spent more time on. So, um, so you know, here are the controls on the mix tab. Uh, looks like you can even add. Okay, so they've got a lot of the built-in uh, effects directly in the software engine too. Um, honestly, a lot of this stuff I'm I would just do directly in Logic, um, but uh, if you are maybe using it in a different way or in a standalone setting or some, something different or, or you just prefer to do it directly here versus in your DAW, uh, you've got quite a few of those controls here. But again, the main places that I would be personally spending my time are over on this play tab, uh, controlling this. And once I get familiar with the sounds, kind of if I wanted to adjust the mix there um, for you know close mic or the kind of room mics further out there, um, then... Uh, and this is where I would spend a lot of my time. But the next thing I want to walk through is something that I spent a little bit of time figuring out here to walk you through it, um, but it's their word builder feature. So this lets you, instead of just having, um, here, here's the quickest way to describe it. So if you, instead of just having a single vowel sound to you know mirror behind your vocal, it lets you construct the vowel sounds you want to best match your vocal so it's going to blend in nicer. The example here, let's just use a single sound. So this is just using a single vowel sound. So over here we're using just uh, epic ah. And then um, if we are instead, so I'll pull up the, the kind of word builder track here. Um, this one it's got a description here, but does basically what I just described. Lets you kind of combine a lot of different vowel sounds to get uh, something that meshes in even better. This takes a little bit of figuring out. Uh, at least it took me a little bit of figuring out. So um, what you can start, this is kind of looks like gibberish, but it's uh, these are the phonetics that it's kind of guided me through to get the pronunciation that a choir would sing to give you those vowel sounds. So, um, you know, if I, just to show you how I got this, <clears throat> the vocal I'm kind of mirroring, this is just something that popped in my head, so we, I ran with it, but we've got a, let's, the, the vocal follow here is. Follow me, follow me, follow me until I hit the floor. So we've got that, uh, follow me until I hit the floor. And so at first, you know, I just typed in, follow me until I hit the floor. And this will um, it, this will use whatever text you enter here. So again, I went to the perform tab and then the word builder multi here. And then you type in your text and then uh, this is what you get. So if we're listening here. So you can see it's it's kind of confusing at first because right there I I when I didn't really know how to work this is exactly what I did and then I was like oh it sounds different I don't know if it matches what I'm doing um, but it, it does take a little bit more work than just typing it in there so what I did was you know uh, if I go back here I mean if I just do follow me and I have this I would set this to English actually. It's going to give you some more information here on like what the phonetics might be for that, um, and and you can change the different settings here for how to best handle it. Um, is, is my understanding so far? So instead of just typing it in English, what I've done is um, try to use the phonetics that they have here, and then choose the phonetic setting, and then it starts to be a little more accurate in what you're doing. The other thing that's been helpful. Uh, is using this reset position because I've found that sometimes if I'm starting it or stopping it at a weird time, it'll 
get off with the number of notes that I have versus the number of uh, phonetic syllables that I've lined up here. And so if you just kind of start, start over and click that reset, it seems to kind of get it back in the right spot. Um, so for listening to this, let's, let's just take a listen here. So again, it's not like you're hearing the exact words, but you're hearing the vowels and the general uh, mouth shape that go along with each of those words. And where that's going to be helpful is as that background choir going to uh, going along with the vo lead vocal in front of it, um, better matching that. Uh, and if you have a, a larger choir arrangement, then it gives you a lot more flexibility with doing it here with one instrument, this word builder instrument versus trying to do that across multiple tracks with each of those individual vowel sounds that we were looking at earlier. So, you know, I normally like what I mean by that is I might have a, like an E note, uh, E, and then I would, you know, maybe duplicate that, go over here, uh, go to browse and go to, uh, O. And then I would, you know, label this like O track. <laughs> and then I would keep doing that for the vowels that I need and just kind of play across the tracks to get that sound. This, um, even without a lead vocal in front of it, this word builder would be very helpful for um, letting you do that on one track and not having to get multiple instances of it going um, uh, across all those different tracks. So um, those are a couple of the use cases for me um, having it be able to sit in the background better uh, to a lead vocal is cool. Um, the other th thing that I've also uh, noticed as I'm as I'm wanting to get more control over it is when you click on each of these syllables, it'll let you choose how long it's spending on each part of that phonetic. So it's got your F and then your uh, ah sound here, and you can control how long it takes to go uh, to go into each one. So you know, at first for me, like these were kind of a little too delayed for what I wanted. Partly because this vocal isn't like a long drawn out vocal. It's just follow me. You know, it's it's pretty. It's not like I'm doing a long drawn out thing where um, it, it has room for the the vo the choir to kind of rise in with it. So I can go through to each of these syllables and just you know bring the that second vowel sound right to the beginning here and and kind of speed up the pace of the the feel of it so it doesn't feel like that choir is lagging behind that lead so much um so so this is where you can go and control that syllable by a syllable um so really cool the amount of control you have over this stuff um i've not used anything like it um it, the the word builder setup side of this so this is where i spent a lot of my time figuring things out and i uh, got excited to show you what what is in it so uh, hopefully you also find this pretty cool and uh and have some ideas for where you can use that so again i'm just going to compare that with the single sound here versus the vocal in front Versus if we just have that single sound, let's just hear that. You know, even right there, you can just kind of hear that. Uh, and then the me clashing a little more than we did with that word builder on. Um, so again, just kind of hearing that here. So I'm sure I can get this closer if I spend more time figuring out more of these phonetics. This is uh, definitely, I think, a learned skill um, for, for getting that more accurate. The one I can really hear the most difference on is that kind of till syllable. Um, that, that's the one where I can hear it kind of really change the most. Um, so as you learn your phonetic alphabet, I guess is what you maybe it's called. Um, but as you start to figure that out and get more accurate sounds out of this, um, you know, the better it's going to sound. So, um, 
again, this was the coolest thing that I saw uh, in in the pack. Everything sounded great, um, or in the VST here in the in the software engine. So uh, everything I heard sounded great. You have the controls you'd expect to have in in uh, this kind of instrument here, and uh, the word builder was just really cool. And I spent a ton of time uh, playing with that, figuring it out. So again. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you liked what you saw and want to take advantage of that deal, go ahead, check it out. Again, it's a limited time offer there, 70% off East West Hollywood Platinum Choirs. So uh, thanks for hanging out and hope to see you next time.